Hello my friend, it is your brother Hampton from Hybrid Calisthenics. I wanted to do this quick video for you because I know a lot of you have resolutions for the new year. The new year usually means new fitness resolutions. A lot of people are not happy with their current fitness and health and want to change that in 2022. And first of all, I say major congratulations and respect to you. Anybody that wants to change themselves and makes active changes to do that has my respect, so cheering for all of you. But what comes with this resolution is usually this urge to buy things and companies take this opportunity to sell you things that you want to buy anyway, but you do want to buy them, so can you really blame the companies? So, the first thing people often do when they decide that they want to tackle this new task, this new goal, is buy a bunch of stuff that they don't need. And what unfortunately sometimes seems to happen is several months from now, several months down the road, you've taken multiple days off in a row, you haven't worked out, you haven't worked on your resolution in a while, and that's the same as you were last year, but now you spent hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on workout equipment, on certain protein shakes, protein powders, and you're not really better off for it. You just spent a lot of money. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what home fitness equipment I would recommend you buy first if you're looking to buy something. Okay, so how I'm going to break this down is I'm going to break it down into tiers. Uh, $0, $25, $50, $200, something like that, and I'll tell you what I would buy given that budget. Regardless, the first thing we're going to start with is zero dollars. What do you buy if you have no money? Well, thankfully, a big part of fitness, in fact, the majority, I would say, 90 plus percent of what you need to get healthy, fit, and strong, you need no money for. You have your body, you have the floor, and you have gravity. And if you're wondering how you can train your biceps and your lats and the muscles in your back, well, you can do that with a combination of bridges and maybe some isometric exercise. For example, you can do an isometric bicep curl with a towel. It's not ideal, but it's still something, and you can put a surprising amount of force through your biceps, through your body, with isometrics. And yes, I guess you could argue that the towel costs money, but I'm assuming you have a towel anyway, right? If not, improvise. Now, a lot of you that are familiar with my content already know that I feel this way, and I've said it many times, but it does bear repeating, just to remind us that the vast majority of what we need to get healthy, fit, and strong can be found for zero dollars in our body, the floor, and gravity. This is just to remind you that you don't need to buy a bunch of stuff, which includes clothes. <laughs> um, one of the first things people buy is athletic wear, which I didn't really include in this video because I work out and I film videos in pretty much this. It's just this, um, some, you can't really see in the camera here, but jeans <laughs> and flip-flops are really what I wear to work out. You don't have to buy the performance stretch stuff. Some of it feels very nice. Uh, I wear that sometimes, but I sometimes just work out in a t-shirt. And honestly, since I'm focusing on home workout, you can work out naked if you want, if you live alone. If you live alone, I really should add that. If you live alone and or you have a private space, like a private room where you can work out and nobody sees you. If you have roommates or family, don't work out naked in front of them and then blame me for it. All I'm saying is you don't necessarily need workout clothes or even clothes in general when applicable. Anyway, moving on. If I had $25, if we're working with a $25 budget, I would buy a stick like a broomstick. Not sponsored by broom companies, <laughs> but the reason I would buy a stick over some pull-up bars that you might be able to buy for $25, but that's kind of sketchy and they're not always in that price. There might be a holiday discount, but in general, you can buy a pretty sturdy stick, not a hollow one like this. Try to get a sturdy one and you can set it between two relatively high objects in your house. If you have like two couches or two sofas, you can move together and you can set it down or a railing or anything, maybe your bed, maybe a chair, anything secure and stable, you can start doing pull-ups with this. And because you can't adjust the height, what you can do is you can adjust how far you bend your legs. So you already have everything that you had in the previous tier, plus now you have a way to do pulling exercises. That's pretty much the only change. But once again, I have to emphasize, please be safe with this because I'd much rather you do that or just don't do the pulling exercise than do the pulling exercise in an unsafe way and potentially seriously injure yourself. Try to find a stable stick. 
At this range, you do have some more options, some different things you can choose depending on what you want. But you're going to notice in this video that most of these pieces of equipment are just different ways you can do pull-ups and different ways you can scale exercises. In fact, the next tier is going to be a very similar one, just spoiler alert. But here, you can have a doorway pull-up bar. You can get a pretty decent one off Amazon or wherever for $50. I highly recommend that you find one with steel mounts. If you can't do that in your apartment, if you can't drill into the doorway of your apartment, then I would consider going somewhere else. I am personally just not a very big fan of tension mounting. You can do it once. Most people can try it once and pull themselves up and nothing seems to happen. But you're gonna be using that hopefully over and over and over again many times and often towards the end of your set, you're gonna be very tired and if you fall, God forbid, uh, you could seriously injure yourself. So I highly recommend if you're gonna use a doorway pull-up bar to use the steel mounts that usually come with it. I guess I had this on the whole time and I didn't realize. Alternatively, you can usually find some gym rings online for around $50. Sometimes they have a holiday discount. These things hang up by some straps that look like this when they're folded, but I've used these in many of my videos, including my pull-up one, and they're just a very handy piece of training equipment to have. Now, full disclosure, I do sell gym rings. In fact, the ones I'm holding up here are hybrid Calcinex branded, but also I wanna mention that I didn't invent these. These have been used by gymnasts, among other people, for decades at least. In fact, they're called gymnastic rings because they're used by gymnasts. Imagine that. You see, I can figure these things out. Mm -hmm. If you would like the hybrid rings, I'll leave a link to them down below in the description. Otherwise, you can find them other places online. I also have a DIY tutorial where I show you how to make your own for almost free. So either way, I don't care who you get them from. I just recommend that you get some gym rings. They're super handy to have. Alternatively, some of you at this point already have some way to do pull-ups. Either you already had one in your house that was already mounted and you haven't used in years and you're finally using it, or you have a playground around your house or somewhere where you can access, or you have a gym membership, which I guess would count towards the budget, but we're not using that here. <laughs> or you have a gym membership, or you have a tree, or anywhere you can do pull-ups, you decide you don't want the gym rings, you don't want pull-up bars, I would recommend getting a yoga mat. They're very handy for the leg raises you do and for some of the bridges. I would recommend you get a good one. And if you don't like yoga, some people in the comments in our community don't like yoga, you can get an exercise mat. But either way, they look pretty much identical. But I would get one that's at least 10 millimeters, I believe. It's very worth it to have a thicker one. If you cheap out and get one that's really thin, sometimes I think, why even have one? Like I can feel small bumps in the floor or on the ground or if I'm doing it in the grass. It's very worth it to get a thick one, in my opinion. Thick and sturdy because you don't want one where your hands sink in too much when you push on it because that kind of hurts your wrists. And lastly, if you have $200 allocated to spend on fitness equipment, I would buy a pull-up tower, sometimes called a power tower. They just look like this. Now, I don't currently have one because I never really needed one, but I did get one that I want to review, so look for that in a few weeks. I foresee it being pretty handy because you can do both pull-ups and dips, two very good exercises and multiple variations thereof. Now that's pretty much it. Like I said in the beginning, this was meant to be a quick video where I just quickly gave you my thoughts on what to buy for the holiday season and for your fitness resolutions of 2022. If you want me to go more in depth on any of these things, I can. If you want me to go more in depth on a specific brand, I have a series I do on the channel called Unsponsored Reviews which are exactly what they sound like. They're like reviews, but unsponsored. Anyway, that's what I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you watched towards the end. I apologize if this video was a little bit more boring. It's really just a quick answer to a common question that I get. I was inside today because it was pretty cold outside in the 30s, which I know some people will point out that's not really that cold. It's not cold if I'm exercising outside, if I'm going for a jog and I'm doing stuff, but it's pretty cold if I'm standing in the same spot for at least 10 to 20 minutes, really not moving all that much, other than my hands. I wonder if I move my hands a lot during videos because I film out in the cold and that kind of kept them warm. I don't know. But once again, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments what you would like to see, if there's any questions that you have, and I'll do my best to answer. Thank you so much, my friend. Have a wonderful, beautiful day. And yeah, I took down my clock about halfway through the video to make the thumbnail, and I just now realized I didn't put it back up. Sorry about that.